We're going to get started here in just a couple minutes. Um, we've got quite a few people in the waiting room, so we're just going to let them admit them into, into our program here. So let's just give it a few minutes. Um, it's so good to see so many people logging on. Um, I'm Molly. Uh, I'm coming to you from Minneapolis. It's a beautiful day here. It's 86 degrees and sunny. Um, would love to know where, where everybody is. So feel free in the chat section to click on chat and just say who you are and, and where you're um, logging in from. Love to hear a little bit more about everybody that's on the call. Um, would love to hear about um, if you're new to NPH or if you've been involved with NPH for a few years. Um, you know, which homes? Oh, we have Gabby here from New Zealand. Hi, Gabby, welcome. Excited to have you. New Zealand sounds like a very nice place to be right now. Um, so, and we have Nell Nellie. Hi, Nellie. She's from St. Paul. Um, so she's right over here. So good to see you. Um, so tell me a little bit about which homes have you guys visited and have any of you been to El Salvador? And we have Chris from Madison. Welcome. Great to see you. Nellie, have you been to El Salvador? I'm putting her on the spot here. While we're waiting, um, I have, oh, Nelly says, oh my gosh, Nelly's been to El Salvador seven times. Wow. We have, um, sorry, your name is cut off on my chat, but someone else has visited El Salvador. That's wonderful. Do you guys know um, what El Salvador is famous for? Anyone? I will share with you, it's known for its beautiful beaches and fun fact, it hosts the World Surfing Competition. Anna from Massachusetts, welcome. So great to have you. And we have Gabrielle, she sponsors a girl in Peru and would like to visit her when it's safe, but she hasn't been to El Salvador. Well, hopefully Gabrielle, when we start traveling again, you'll be able to join one of our trips. So that would be wonderful. Uh, did you also know that El Salvador is known as the land of the volcanoes? because of the more than, there's more than 20 volcanoes in the territory. Um, let's see, we have, oh, we have Julie joining us. Got a few more people coming into, out of the weight room into, into this room. Uh, who knows the capital of El Salvador? I'm throwing this out there. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl's coming to us from Scottsdale. Uh, oh, I, apparently this was an easy question because so many people have San Salvador. John Deinhardt, welcome. We're happy to have you. Heather, hi. So excited to have you join. I know you're calling from Chicago. Wonderful. Um, let's see. Anne from Seattle. You've been to the DR, the Dominican Republic. You sponsor three children. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. And we hope that you can make it back to the DR too. Um, Hopefully we're traveling soon. We would love to, to go back and visit the homes and, and the kids. Uh, let's see, some more fun facts. Um, how about the country of El Salvador in terms of geographical area occupied is only slightly smaller than, anybody know which state? I'll just say it is Massachusetts. Um, oh, Chuck, I should have known Chuck, you would get this. Chuck is my trivia partner. <laughs> welcome. Lauren, welcome. So good to have you, Meg. Welcome. Xavier, thank you for joining. Yes, and please everyone share your thoughts, comments using the all panelists and attendees option. It's really fun. So again, we're just going to start in a couple minutes, probably in about a minute here. Um, we still have a few more people in the waiting room, so we're just going to let everybody in. Because uh, I know nobody wants to miss any of it, um, but it's just so great to see so many of you logging on for this third episode. Hi, Kim from Tempe. Welcome. I won't even ask you, Kim, how the weather is in Tempe because isn't it always perfect? And we have Tony here from Minnesota. Hi, Tony. Um, oh, good. Your speaker is working now. <laughs> Wonderful. And it looks like we have Violet from Massachusetts. Boston, welcome. 
Really great. And Serena, welcome. I think we've got just about everybody in the waiting room. If there's any latecomers, we'll definitely be um, putting them into the room. So I am just going to think we're ready to get started. So hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Again, if you just joined, my name is Molly Boyum, and I'm the Chief Development Officer for MPH USA. And on behalf of all the staff here, we hope you and your families are safe and healthy. So welcome to the third episode of the NPH Open Home Series. If you were with us on episode number one, we visited Honduras. And then episode number two brought us to Bolivia. Today, we were supposed to visit El Salvador, but due to bad weather in their country, we will need to postpone that visit to later in the year. However, we are excited to have you meet Hermano Mayor Sammy Correas. He's an exceptional person who will share his story with us and talk about what it was like to grow up at NPH El Salvador. Our moderator this evening is Casey Guevara Laker, who is the Director of International Engagement for NPH USA. He has visited El Salvador NPH six times in the past three years. So just a quick note before we get started, just a couple quick housekeeping items. I think most of us have all been on Zoom a lot in the last three months, but just as a reminder, um, just a couple of basics. There are some icons that appear um, at the bottom of your screen when you hover your mouse, uh, like chat, Q&A, raise your hand. If at any time you would like to ask a question, choose the Q&A button and a new window will appear where you can type your question. We will be answering several of them at the end of, um, at the, end of the program. And of course, if you have a comment, please click on the chat. So in just a minute, you will meet Sammy and Casey. So without further ado, welcome to episode number three of our Open Home series. episode of the Open Home Series. I'm your host, Casey Guevara Laker, Director of International Engagement at NPH USA. I'm honored to be here with you today for this special episode of the Open Home Series, where we welcome NPH El Salvador, Hermano Mayor, Sammy Correas. Before Thank coming you. to NPH, hi Sammy. Before coming to NPH, Sammy spent the majority of his childhood living in uncertain and at times dangerous circumstances. Since coming to NPH, Sammy has been empowered and taken the opportunities available to him to elevate his education and become a leader in his community. Sammy works for the El Salvadorian Consulate here in Chicago and recently graduated from Northeastern. Sammy's story is one of despair and hope, tragic endings which have led to new beginnings. Sammy's story is uniquely his but it is also not an uncommon story among the thousands of children who have come to NPH over the last 65 years. 
Now, before we, we begin, I want to mention to our viewers and listeners that Sammy's story does contain real, deep, and at times unimaginable moments of darkness. But at the end of that darkness, there's opportunity and a lifetime of light. I'm looking forward to hearing more from Sammy. I hope you all are excited. Sammy, it's great to see you. Welcome to the Open Home series. How are you? Hi. Now, um, thank you so much for this great opportunity of having me uh, to be part of the third episode of uh, this MTH USA. It's a pleasure for me to share, to share a little bit of my life and the experience at MTH and also uh, be part of uh, this wonderful family as well, you know. Even though I left MPH, I still, uh, um, I'm still part of the a big MPH family. And also, I just want to thank you, all the listeners and um, um, the audience that want to learn about MPH. So let's begin. Great. Well, first of all, thanks again for joining us here today. I know there are a lot of NPH supporters that are watching, listening. So why don't we start from the beginning? Let's start from, you know, day one, your story. Yeah, my, my life for now, um, um, as you mentioned it before, it started like really dark when I was, since I was a child. But, you know, eventually when I got to MTH, it got, you know, I, I, I was able to see the light. And, and now, you know, it's even better. It's even brighter now. But going back to the beginning, uh, just a little bit about me. Um, when I was three months old, all my mom and dad, they, um, they decided to try to sell me for about Four hundred dollars, which which is uh, similar to two thousand colones, that was that used to be the currency uh, in El Salvador in the past. But you know, like nobody wanted me, you know, with my skin infection, so they just decided to left me on the trash. But I was really lucky, and uh, I was really, really, really lucky in the power, you know, of God too. Um, there was a, a man named George who picked me up from the garbage. So that was my my first. Um, experience, you know, since I was born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he he found you in in the garbage and 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 decided to do what from there? I mean, at that point, it's I you know I'd be I'd be worried in in a lot of ways. So what were the what were the next kind of events that unfolded from from that point? So what happened next? Uh, he you know as as I you know mentioned before. He, um, he's a, a guardian angel for me because he saved my life once when he decided to pick me up from the garbage. He took me to the hospital and then he paid all the expenses at the hospital until I got better uh, and then healthier. And then um, he uh, took me to his house and I lived with him for about two years, two years and a half. Mm -hmm. And also at that moment, also he decided that I should learn a little bit about his business. He used to be a baker. So I will be just learning about how to, you know, pack bread into the bag. So he will deliver, you know, the bread to the community. But, you know, one of those days, um, it, uh, there was another incident when uh, we went, uh, he put me on, at the back of his truck and he started driving to deliver the bread. And uh, one of, you know, one day, uh, a group of gang members, they stopped the car and uh, they um, shot George several times in the forehead. And they also shot me once at the back of my head. Um, and they, the, you know, the, the group, they stole everything and because they thought we both uh, are, you know, were dead. But, you know, I always believe that um, God has a plan for all of us and the bullet only grazed the, the back of my skull. And uh, also George was able to wake up, you know, and then pick me from the ground and put me on, onto the truck and draw me to the hospital. And uh, as soon as he arrived to the hospital, he crashes into uh, several cars. And that was the, the sign, you know, for the others to save me. But at that moment, he, he, he died. So yeah, that was the, that's the why, that, that was the second um, time that he saved my life again. Wow, wow. You know, I, I've, um come to know Sammy a couple times just for the listeners out there and people that are watching and I've heard his story before but you know each time that you hear it it really just that part and so many tragedies and, and difficulties for 
for a child at that point, I mean, it really does give you pause um, each time. And so, so thanks for sharing that, that Sammy. And so at this point you're at, you were at the hospital. Is that then when you came to know NPH or was there kind of more to the story between, between this time in your life and then coming to know NPH? Oh, no, um, there, there is a little bit more to that. Well, there is so much more to that before I came to NPH. Um, so after that, um, uh, uh, George had um, uh, a brother and his brother, Julio, he decided to take care of me for another like two, two and a half years as well. And um, but as soon as I, you know, uh, was able to move with him to that to his house, um, he uh, he noticed that I wasn't I, I was not a good kid, you know. I, I, so he he thought that I will need some help, and so he uh, decided me decide to take me to an orphanage back in San Salvador. At that moment, San Salvador is the capital of the country, as some of you mentioned it and guessed it. So. Uh, so that was my first time I, I did step uh, to an orphanage. But um, at that moment, you know, that was everything I knew. So I didn't know if that was great or not. And, um, you know, the orphanage did offer just a little bit, but not full resources. But I did not like it. I did not like it. And when I was around five years old, five, close to six, I just decided to leave the orphanage because I, I, I didn't like it. I, I, feel, I didn't feel comfortable at all. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I decided to live on the streets. And, um, and luckily, I was able to find a group of other boys who were sticking together and also protecting each other. Um, and uh, we were able to find a, um, uh, like a job. So, and we were, um, we were uh, loading trucks of fruits um, that were uh, traveling from Honduras, El Salvador, and, and, and Guatemala. So that will be our job in order to find some food, you know, instead of stealing. So that was kind of like a routine for several, several days. Um, but with the police, um, the police of El Salvador, they will pick us up, you know, take to the, take us to the orphanage and it, we will escape again because we knew we didn't like that place. So that was our routine back and forth. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you were kind of in and out of a of an orphanage at that time, um, working with some friends. It sounds like to really survive on the streets of uh, what could be described as a as a dangerous city at the time. Um, so, again, was it then the police that brought you to NPH and and introduced you to to the organization, or um, was it someone else? No, um, I think um, the, the way I remember. Um, so it was in back in November 1999 when this orphanage in San Salvador heard about an orphanage that just opened back in June in 1999 um, in Santa Ana and that's maybe two hours away from the capital and so this orphanage decided to gather a group of 10 and I was one of them and they just sent us to, to that orphanage and um, and I didn't I didn't realize that the, the car, the van that was driving us, it was the car that belonged to NPH at that moment. So that, I, I think that was the first car that they own, you know, to, to carry, you know, the children from different orphanages. So uh, as soon as I got to, to the office in, in, in NPH for the first time, I see this old guy uh, giving us, you know, chips and soda, you know, trying to make us, make us, you know, happy and comfortable mm -hmm. and not scary at all, you know. So at that moment, I didn't know who he was. I, I just was like, who is this guy doing in here? You know, he's too old, he can barely move. But eventually, you know, months later, I just realized that it was Father Watson, the founder of MPH. You know, <laughs> Father Honor. So you, so I guess I have a couple of questions then. So first question is, you met Father Watson on your first day at MPH. That's, I think, pretty amazing right there. Um, but, you know, after having, lived a, a very a difficult life kind of in the past and, and been um, to an orphanage. What, what were your kind of your first impressions, I guess, of, you know, walking into NPH El Salvador and seeing what the feel was, what the community was like? Uh, yeah, what were those first impressions? Um, well, at the beginning, um, we were at the office where Father Watson was waiting for us. 
and then they drove us to the house, to the main house. And as soon as I stepped, that was my own feeling. I don't know about the other ones, but my, my first feeling is as, as soon as I stepped into the boys' house, it felt like a home. You know, it, it felt so much different quite away. Um, it, you know, like I, I could see, you know, back then probably there were only like 14 uh, children, maybe 13, or maybe up to 20, you know, somewhere around, you know, that number. And, uh, but I saw, you know, like the kids interacting with the caregivers, the, some other children playing with each other, some other children watching TV or doing some activities, you know, but all of them looked like they were together, you know, instead of being, uh, being apart, you know, so, and, and they mm -hmm. looked like, like a family right away, even though I didn't know the concept of a family, you know, uh, but this one, it felt right away, you know, like I, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, a, a great place. I, you know, still I didn't know what it was or, you know, what, you know, what was the, 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 the routine. But at, the, at that moment, I just fell in love right away because mm -hmm. of like the, the, the elm of fear, you know, that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've put together a couple of, of pictures, uh, being that we unfortunately were unable to kind of get any video from, from NPH El Salvador for, for this um, open home episode. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of look at some of the pictures of what NPH El Salvador looks like today um, and kind of compare and contrast to what your experience was and how it's, I would imagine, changed quite a bit since, since you were there. Um, so we're going to just take a look at these pictures. Uh, the first one is, let's bring it up here. Yep. So the first one here is the, the entrance with the flags and of course, beautiful grounds. Um, and on the right, we have kind of the main road into, into the, into the home. So Sammy, did it, I mean, it can't have looked like this at the time, did it? Well, I mean, what did it look like when you arrived? What was different? What has changed? Oh my gosh, um, it, this didn't exist back then in 1999. So um, uh, as I told you before, you know, uh, it, it, it felt so weird, but at the same time, so wonderful that back then we were only like 23 uh, children. And then, like, as the family was growing, um, we were switching from different houses, you know, from bigger and bigger, so we can have more children. And then at the end, uh, you know, like, eventually, Father Watson decided to uh, buy this property because he thought the family would be, you know, like, so much bigger. And so I, I remember this place uh, at the beginning, back in 2003, 2004, um it didn't look nothing like this i couldn't imagine that this is you know that the picture that i will be looking now uh it was empty it was dry you know the, it, it was like dead almost but now you know like I, I was i was being you know honored to leave for so many years and i saw this place you know turning into a beautiful home with beautiful houses uh, you know spaces and nature you know like you can do everything so and you know at the end, Father Watson wanted, uh, the, you know, this house to have everything from the school, a farmer, uh, the church, a clinic. So, um, you know, th this is, you know, like a wonderful, wonderful, like, you know, probably heaven, I will call it, you know, because it has everything. So, yes. Yeah, it, it, it really does. And one thing that it has is um, great, great area and great homes for the, for the kids. And it's really meticulously cared for. So if we could just see the, the next slides. Yeah, so here we go. Um, Sam, do you want to explain these pictures? I mean, one thing before maybe I ask for your thoughts here, one thing that sticks out to me is, again, it's just very well cared for. So having been to El Salvador a couple of times myself, I know that one of the main components of what NPH teaches is responsibility. What were your kind of um, initial thoughts with having responsibility, with having maybe a life that was different than what you had experienced before in terms of having responsibility, having a schedule, being a little bit more accountable, um, and, and really having to care for your own home. Um, so I told you the, the, the feelings that I had when I stepped into MPH for the first time. It was wonderful. But it was kind of annoying because there were so many rules. You know, there, there, <laughs> Father Watson, he, he wanted, you know, uh, uh, the children to be disciplined. Like, a, 
a family, you know, in the family, you have chores, you have things to do. You have got to be in charge of chores and, you know, make sure that your brothers or, you know, the siblings, they also do things, you know, like, uh, as, as they, you know, like the family said, so, or the parents said. So in this house, you know, we, uh, we were so many children that um, you can see the pictures at the big house, you know, the second story, that's where the oldest, um, um, brothers and sisters leave, you know, but separate. And then on the first floor, uh, that's where the youngest leave, you know. But the thing in here is that the house, you know, everyone in that house, they have chores to do. They have responsibilities. We have obligations. So we got, you know, like the, the second story has to be clean and the first story has to be clean. The grass has to be water. Uh, it has to be clean, everything. So, but if something is not done yet, it's not clean yet, it makes it, it makes the home look bad. So you know that sense of like uh, a teamwork, you know, in this big family. Because you know, uh, for example, I remember you know times that we were like uh, I don't know maybe 160 boys, you know, like just siblings. You know, that's how big we were, and and just having making sure that the whole house was clean, you know. And of course, we have you know some some of us who were you know lazy not to do the things, but the other all this. Uh, brothers, they will be like chasing us, trying to make us, you know, finish our chores every single day. So, um, so at that at that moment, it was kind of annoying just to follow rules and, you know, like trying to wash my own clothes and helping others. And I didn't like that because I used to not do anything outside. But then, then um, maybe years later, I just realized that, you know, by doing my chores and being responsible, um, and you know, going to school, doing, you know everything I needed to do, then I, I realized that I would uh, earn more opportunities. And so I think that's one of the reasons, you know, why am I here, you know, talking on behalf of MPH, uh, my oldest brothers and sisters too. Right, right. Well, knowing you today, it's, it's hard to imagine someone that um, maybe didn't like doing the chores. I know that when I was younger, I definitely um, tried to skirt my duties in regards to chores, but I guess that's part of what being a, being a kid is at the time. So, you know, what's also interesting is each time that I've been to NPH El Salvador, one thing that I've always really liked is the food. And so I can imagine, again, from a life, um, a, a difficult life, and, and maybe not knowing where your next meal is coming from, to going to a situation where you have three meals a day. You know, I have to, I guess, my, I, I, again, really like, like the food at MPH El Salvador. I think maybe I'm a little bit biased. Papooses are, are, are great. But um, what's your favorite food? What's your, what's, what's your favorite food at, at NPH El Salvador? And, and maybe how is it different to, to kind of come to this type of life at NPH? Uh, before I, I answer your question, I just want to emphasize, I just want to emphasize that, um, we have all the brothers and sisters. We, you know, like MPH makes sure that, that you take responsibilities by cooking, by being a caregiver or, you know, help the other caregivers or, you know, be uh, assistants at the school or the computer uh, lab or being a chauffeur or work at the farmer, you know. So in here, you know, um, some of the, our, our, our sisters, they, they do maybe a thousand tortillas per day, you know. And they, you know, like one of the things that I noticed is that and even me for myself, I can speak for myself, when we did things, it, it was, it, it never felt like uh, we were punished. It never felt like, uh, oh, it's by pressure. No, it, it felt because, it, it felt because it was the right thing. And it felt because we were, we were being helped from the past. And now it, it was our turn to help the other, you know, the other. So in this case, you can see, her, you know, making tortillas and it, it just, she knows that, you know, it's the food for everyone, the caregivers, the teachers, you know, the crew, the, the workers, the children's, everyone. So, um, and going back to your, uh, to your question, I think one of my favorite uh, dishes was casamiento, uh, which is basically just a mix of beans and, and, and rice. It, it's a, that mix. And I think that the beans, uh, they add like a little moisture to the rice. And that makes it feel like really, really good, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was one of my favorite ones. Sounds delicious. With one of those tortillas that we have here on the screen, I think some some beans and rice in one of those tortillas would be great. <laughs> yeah. And, and the other thing is, you know, I just want to add one more note to this. 
you know, in the past, a lot of the, the children, you know, a lot of our brothers and sisters, when they were outside of MPH, they probably worry about having a meal. For example, when I used to live on the streets, you know, sometimes there will be like three, four days without eating, you know, and we were children. And we mm -hmm. were just trying to see, you know, who can give us some food, but we, you know, we were not lucky enough to get one banana or one orange. As soon as we step in pH, you know, like, you know, we never worry about, oh, is there gonna be food for tomorrow or, or snacks, you know, every single day there was food on, on our tables. We never thought, oh my gosh, should we ask? No, it never crossed our mind ever, mm -hmm. ever again. So it, mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, it's just wonderful that uh, MPH is able to provide all of that every single day until, you know, we become professionals. You know, I want to actually go back to something that you just mentioned a, a moment ago, and that was um, that some of the older, you know, pequeños that, that, that were a little bit older maybe had to care for some of the younger ones, um, you know, at, at maybe different times during the day or maybe at different times during the year. Um, so here we have some really great pictures of some of the, the younger pequeños at NPH El Salvador, which is absolutely adorable. And Sam, did you ever have to, 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 care, for, to care for the young kids? And you know, what was that like? Um, I will say this, um, and, and, and I'm just kidding, it was annoying. It was annoying <laughs> because you know, the fact that you are uh, in charge of you know, 18, a, 30, a group of 30 ch uh, children is, is not fun at all. You know, like I know, you know, now I understand why the parents are, you know, right now like, oh my gosh, two children, two children. No, imagine if you have 30 or 20, you know. But at the same time, um, it, 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 it besides being annoying, at the same time, you, you, we learn about caring for others. We, we learn that they also, we were in their shoes in the past. So they are growing up we already group, you know, and, and, they, and they just want someone to talk. They want someone to play with. They want someone just to be there with them, you know, just hugging, just, you know, like doing something, just be there because in the past, the majority of us, we didn't have that kind of attention, that kind of caring, love and support. So right now, um, you know, when as we are growing older, so we are being told, you know, like, so this is gonna be your group this is gonna be you order the group and then you know for a year two years and then you learn you know just it's more than basics obligations you learn more than that you, you learn more about that concept of a family and and one of mm -hmm. the pictures uh, you can see uh, at the bottom uh, Tio Legario Campos he used to be the uh, national director of El Salvador and you know, he grew up in MPH Mexico too and, and he came to El Salvador he opened the house and he made sure that er, the whole family had the structures of love, education, healthcare, and with the same concept what Father Watson had from the beginning. So, and every single one of us, you know, we grew up with the, with that philosophy that we need to care for the other ones, and not just you know from from MPH, also about society. You know, when we grow up older and decide to leave MPH, we are now able to have that weapons if you call it that way or tools mm -hmm. you know that we can help others outside uh of, of mph and also being able to help mph as i'm doing right now you know i'm so glad to be uh just representing mph not just el Salvador, but the whole entire mph family mm -hmm. well again it's, it's great to have you have you sam and you know it's, it's amazing to just see all the role models that you had in your life that you were able to be a role model and care for some of the younger kids and then the great role, role model that you've grown up to be now. I mean, it's incredibly inspirational. And, you know, part of growing up and being a role model, I think has probably involved a significant amount of education. And at NPH, education is a critical component of, of the trajectory of, of any of the pequeños. And I know that it's been critical in your life as well. Again, congratulations on re recently graduating from, North, from Northeastern. That's an amazing achievement. Um, so here we have a couple of pictures of graduation and studying at NPH. It's really one of the core pillars and fundamental to what NPH is. I know that, that Sam, you've um, been able to excel in this regard. So any, any quick comments here on, on the education or how that helped you kind of achieve and, and get you to where you are today? Yes, of course. Uh, 
MPH, you know, but you know, like since day one, they gave me all the resources, and that you know, uh, the most powerful resource is education. You know, uh, that's the way we are able to break the cycle of poverty, and that's the way we can help others. You know, when we grow older and be and become a professional. So, in in the school, it, it's not just about learning and reading books. We also learn how to play, how to do uh, group teams. And also uh, we become, you know, even though we are studying and we are in separate grades, but we also, when, when we go and have our, our, our breaks, and we go and just, you know, play each other, you know, play with everyone, talk with everyone, and just share the experiences about different teachers, you know, like, oh, was he annoying? Was, was the test hard? You know, like like a normal, you know, like the children, you know, from, from mm -hmm. family. So. We also have that experience in, in MPH, even though we live together 24/7, but we also experience different experiences from different grades. So, and then at the end, you know, everyone is happy because they are able to achieve, you know, graduation from kindergarten, um, ninth grade, from high school, uh, from universities or workshops. You know, if they uh, decide to go in that role as well, you know, everyone celebrates uh, their su su you know, being successful. You know. In my right. own experience, you know, I never saw anyone fail. You know, if someone was having a hard time for the school, there will be a, a older brother studying with that, you know, a specific child along with the teacher. So everyone was pushing, pushing, like, you know, doing chores, you know, we have to push everyone, you know, together so we can have the house clean and in, in education in the school, it will be the same thing as well. Even, mm -hmm. even if you have a smart kid uh, on, on, on the grade, that kid will help the other ones to be, become successful. So I, I thought that was really wonderful. And remember, we, we didn't know each other in the past. And then we became one whole family. And the, the, the fact that MPH was able to give me all of this, uh, now I was able to come here, learn the language first, and then go to Northeastern. And then finally, uh, I was able to graduate you know, in social work from Northeastern uh, University of Illinois. So uh, everything I learned is from MPH. It's, it's really, you know, truly an inspirational story. And, it, you know, again, thanks for participating. You know, I want to just kind of pivot here to um, another section of our conversation, if you don't mind. And we'll, if we could take a couple of questions from uh, the audience that we have. And one question that has come up um, already is, how did you learn English? How did you learn English so well? I mean, we're having an absolutely fine time communicating. You're clearly very fluent. Um, so how was it learning English and, and how did you do that? I got to tell you something. English is not easy. It's so hard. It, it's crazy. <laughs> I still struggle. I still struggle. <laughs> and probably the ones who know Spanish will, just, will say the same thing. I, you know, language in general is so hard. Uh, the first three months, it was really, really tough. Um, I was able to go to a program in DePaul University here in Chicago as well. And, um, oh boy, I, I, I almost cried because every single day I went there, I didn't understand a thing because it was a different level of English. And the students who were there already, they already knew like medium English probably. So, uh, but eventually, you know, like one of the things that I remember from Father Watson, don't be for me, you know, on your path and then use the resources that you have now and, you know, move forward. So that was one of the things that popped in my mind uh, when I was about to quit or cry. Then I was like, I'm here, I should do it, you know, thanks to MPH, I'm here. And then that's how I, uh, my, my mind just changed and, you know, let's learn English, it's fun. So I, then I start feeling like, oh, this is fun. And so mm -hmm. I think that's why I was able to learn the language quicker. Yeah. 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 Um, thanks for sharing. It seems like, and again, incredible story, an incredible way that you've gone about learning a whole host of, of different things. So one other question that's, that's come from, from the group in the group chat here that we have, what's, what's next for you? So for right now, um, I accomplished my dream of uh, learning, acquiring the language and also finishing my bachelor's degree in social work. Right now, um, I had, you know, this amazing opportunity to start working for, for the consulate of El Salvador here in Chicago. 
uh, since 2016. So I'm building that experience as well. So right now, um, I always, you know, I always believe that in the past, I was given so many opportunities. I was being helped by MPH and MPH was, you know, it's being helped by all the supporters, like, you know, the ones who are listening to us and always making sure that you help us and put, you know, the money towards the programs that make us uh, become successful. So right now, you know, I, I was being helped. That, that's what I was saying. I was being helped and now it's my time to give back to society, to give back to MPH. And so uh, I would like, you know, now that I have the experience with the consulate, I would like to maybe transfer to a different agency where I can, you know, learn so many new skills and help, and, and help so many people who are groups at risk, you know, and also children, because, mm -hmm. you know, we always have that need. So I, I, I'm, my dream is to help more people, more like children, you know, in the similar situation. So, and, and, and just empower them, you know, because mm -hmm. that was, one of the things that MPH did for us, empower us through mm -hmm. so many, you know, education, you know, uh, having a house and then all, you know, and then this is the product, you know, at the end. Yeah, yeah. So you will continue to serve in, in your community. That's, that's amazing. That's really, that's great, Sam. Last question from, again, the, the chat is, if you had the opportunity to provide advice to a 10 year old pequeño or pequeña who is entering NPH right now today, what would you say to them? Um, enjoy the ride because NPH is a family. It's a family and if your family or if you didn't have family in the past, this is gonna be your uh, a unique family. We're not trying to separate if you have siblings by your own, you know, blood. Um, we're not trying to separate you. We're trying to you to be together, but also know that this is going to be your family. And it's not just about El Salvador. We have families in nine different countries, which we share the same philosophy and, and also the same uh, values, you know, help each other, empower each other, um, and just support each other. So you can move on and become successful. So, so my, my, uh, that will be my, my, my thing. Enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey. You will do really, really good because MPH will give you everything you need. And the, the, everything you need to do is just hard work. You know, do a hard work, you will, you will become successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's true for many of us that are listening in. We've, you know, had to work hard to get to where we are. And Sammy, you're a, a, an amazing, again, a uh, model of that and an, an inspiration, I think, to a lot of us. So again, thanks. Um, finally, what we're gonna do is ask the audience a question. Um, we've already touched on and talked a little bit about food and food at NPH El Salvador. So maybe we'll keep that theme going. Maybe it's because it's around dinner time for a lot of us that are tuning in, but um, we're gonna take a quick poll. What do you think Sam's favorite American food is. And we're gonna, you're gonna see, there it is. If we could just get everybody to vote in. So you have pizza, cheese curds, meatloaf, cheeseburger. A lot of those things involve cheese. So I think maybe, could say you're a fan of cheese, first of all, but maybe there's one of these that, that sticks out a little bit more than the others. Great, thanks. So as we get these polls collated, wow, pizza is coming in at a strong 42%, cheese curds, 16%, meatloaf, second to last with 17%, and cheeseburger, a strong second with 25%. Sam, will you please reveal the answer? Oh my gosh, it's not related to cheese, so <laughs> it's meatloaf. I, I love meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf. Well, truly American and a great dish. So great. thanks for sharing that. It's been fun. Um, you know, Sam, I, I just, again, really want to say thanks a lot for, for participating, for sharing the, sharing the story. Um, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to, to talk with you. And again, thanks for everybody else who's tuned in as well. Um, 
again, it's been it's been really nice talking with everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, thank you again for having me to be part of this wonderful uh, episode three. And I want to thank you for all uh, our listeners too that want to learn about MPH and uh, and if you want some proof of you know what MPH does for us, you know like it, you know me, you know my myself is one of them. So and like me, we have so many wonderful stories and we have so many children coming to MPH who needs your help also uh, to become successful too. So I thank you so much for your time and also for your questions and. Thank you for MPH USA for the wonderful job that you are doing every single day for all of us. Thank you. Wow. Sammy, Casey, thank you. You guys, this was so, so much fun and so enlightening. I just really appreciate um, both of you and Sammy. You're just, you're amazing. I said you were remarkable in the beginning. You are just, you're amazing. So thank you. Um, we we're excited to hear more about your story and just really to hear more about what it was like to grow up in um, MPH El Salvador. So, I would also like to thank um, some of our behind the scene folks who are producing this episode, Meg Brockman and Kim Dunphy. We couldn't do this without you, so thank you so much. Um, and if you would like to support NPH El Salvador, please consider a Mikasa sponsorship. It's an easy way to support all the kids, staff, and programs in our home of El Salvador. Additionally, your support will help the surrounding community with services such as medical, education, and social. Just visit our website at nphusa.org and click on Mi Casa in the upper right-hand corner. Additionally, if you would like to sign up for episode number four, um, you will get a registration link tomorrow. But if you want to sign up right now, that link is available on our website. So again, nphusa.org, and then you will see the open home spot where you can sign up for number four. In case you're wondering, episode number four is an open home visit to Mexico, and it will take place on Tuesday, July 21st at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So thank you, everyone. Take care, and we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.